The Nintendo DS has gotten a lot of attention recently and every month there's more and more people getting back into it. So in this video I'm going to show off a bunch of truly underrated DS games that not many are talking about. Let's get into it. With the first game being Fossil Fighters. Nintendo took a leap of faith on this game and they made it a first party release which did give this one some mainstream attention when it first came out. In Fossil Fighters the gameplay feels a lot like Pokemon but with some small changes. You go around the map excavating dinosaur fossils to bring them back to life where you then get to use them in turn based combat. As of today there hasn't been a new Fossil Fighters game in a while and I don't know if they ever plan on making another one which kind of sucks because it was a cool idea that just sat never took off, but it's still worth playing on the original DS, so if you're a fan of turn-based RPGs, definitely consider this one. And coming in next, Cop the Recruit. To me this game feels like what GTA Chinatown Wars could have been. In Cop the Recruit, you play as an NYPD officer in New York where you take on different missions that could involve shooting or driving vehicles. You also get to use the DS's microphone and make EMS calls with it, which is kind of pointless, but it's cool that they included it. At the time of the game's release, it won quite a few awards and has been considered to be one of the best DS games that really push these systems hardware. So if a third person action title is your kind of game, check this one out. And up next, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Now some people might not think this game is very underrated as the trilogy was ported onto the Nintendo Switch, but I still think the first Ace Attorney is underappreciated as it's a decent visual novel that forces players to pay attention. The game also includes vocal commands along with the touchscreen, so while many might push you towards the Switch version, I still think the original DS game is my preferred way to play. So if you like visual novels and you want to play as a defense attorney, the first Phoenix Wright game is a solid choice. And next is Infinite Space. I put this one on the list because it took me by surprise when I saw how much content is packed into this single DS game. Infinite Space is an RPG based around ship combat and has some great graphics and music to go along with it. The sheer level of depth in this game can honestly be kind of overwhelming, but I found the tutorials to do a decent job at guiding me through. Also the ship customization is insanely detailed so there's definitely going to be some people who really like that. Overall if you like RPG games and you want one centered around space combat, you should consider playing this one. And the next one is Mr. Driller Drill Spirits. When I was researching for this video, I noticed that the Mr. Driller series has really fallen off in recent years, and that made me sad because Mr. Driller is an awesome arcade puzzler that should not be forgotten. The DS version Drill Spirits does an excellent job with the dual screen mechanic as you match up blocks to fill up your oxygen meter. It's a relatively simple puzzle game, but the visuals and modes are what makes it shine. On a side note, the multiplayer is also a lot of fun, but sadly you will need two game cards, which is kinda lame. Overall, Drill Spirits is an excellent entry in the Mr. Driller series and should definitely be played if you get a chance. And moving along, the next game is... Solo to Robo Red the Hunter. This game got super popular a few years ago and it exploded in price. Since then it's sort of come down and I think many have moved on from the series. In Solo to Robo you control Red who operates a small mech that's capable of beating up and throwing around enemies. The game implements a lot of RPG elements but still contains an almost beat em up like combat system. It's a super weird game but it's a ton of fun and honestly one of my favorites on the system. It's just a shame that the game is so expensive nowadays and doesn't have a remaster or a sequel. Still, if you get the chance to try out Solo to Robo on the DS, definitely jump at that opportunity. And up next is The Legendary Starfy. At the time of this game's release, it received a lot of mixed reviews with the most popular critique being how easy the game was. And while they weren't wrong about that, Starfy on the DS is still a blast to play. Starfy is a solid platformer that also includes co-op multiplayer along with small mini games. The Legendary Starfy was the first and the last Starfy game to ever release in North America, so if a low-key platformer interests you, definitely consider this one. And next up, Locke's Quest. This title is regarded by many as one of the best DS games on the handheld, which might surprise some people because it's relatively unknown and still affordable to buy physically. Locke's Quest is a tower defense game with RPG elements where the player uses the bottom touchscreen to build on the battlefield. The combat is split up into two phases with the first one being the build phase and the second being the battle phase. Visually, it's a super nice looking game and one of the most unique titles on the Nintendo DS, so if you're looking for a cheap quality game to try out, Locke's Quest is an easy one to recommend. 
10. And next is Nano Stray 2. I made the decision to go with the second game in the series because it improved on many of the complaints in the original. Nano Stray 2 does an excellent job at bringing the shoot 'em up genre to the Nintendo DS handheld. The game now also allows for more customization and it lets players alter their ships to their unique playstyles. Nano Stray 2 also offers up three different control schemes and adds multiplayer, so shoot 'em ups are your kind of genre, consider playing Nano Stray 2. And so before I show off the final game on this list, I did want to show off some honorable mentions that sadly did not end up making the final cut. They are all still great games in their own right, but I found most of them to either be lacking in gameplay or to simply not be underrated enough. But regardless, they are still good games, so consider checking these ones out if you haven't heard of them. And so the final game on my list is Soul Bubbles. When I got the chance to finally play Soul Bubbles, I was caught off guard by how good the game really was. You play as a shaman who is transporting spirits in these protective bubbles and you're moving them around with the DS stylus. It's a very simple premise, but near the end of the game, it starts getting a lot harder. Also, a fun fact is that this game was initially only released at Toys R Us, meaning it flew under the radar for a lot of people, but luckily, even to this day, it's still relatively affordable on eBay, so if you're looking for a unique puzzle game that utilizes the stylus, definitely check out Soul Bubbles. And so that concludes my list for underrated DS games. Down the road, I'm definitely going to make more DS content as I've recently been getting very into the handheld and I've started to collect it a lot more. Still, I'm sure I missed some games on my list, so if you have any recommendations for me to try, please let me know down in the comments as I'm always on the lookout for new games to play. And with that all said, I just want to say thank you for watching all the way to the end. Please subscribe if you do like my kind of content, and I will see you down the road. Bye.